distributed hash tables. That is DHTs. Okay, so uh, distribution uh, distributed hash table um, is used for the implementation of uh, peer to peer networks, or it's a, so it's a database of um, peer to peer networks. So we can have uh, you know a simple implementation a database um, implementation in a peer to peer network uh, uh, where we can say. Um, uh, so, so, so where we can have a record uh, in the form of a key value pair. So we have a pair where we have a key and so a simple database implementation in a peer-to-peer -peer network would be a key value pair, right? Where we have a key and uh, the associated value. So what we do basically, we query the database with a key and what we'll get in return the value, right? So for example, key is your CNIC and the value is your name. So one possible implementation of building such a network um, can be straightforward, right? Um, that uh, uh, we have a centralized database that have all the keys, uh, this, these pairs stored there. And whenever a machine needs to get uh, the value of a key, I uh, will send the security. But obviously, um, uh, you know, um, uh, obviously, this would be a single point of failure. There will be more burden on a single server containing all these records. So what we want to do is we want to um, uh, have a distributed, uh, you know, uh, we want to build a distributed peer-to-peer -peer version of uh, such a database, right? So single, simple implementation is possible that where we are storing all these pairs on a single server. But what we want, we want to build, we want to build a distributed peer-to-peer uh, -peer version, right? And um, such a distributed peer-to-peer -peer version is uh, called what, um, or is referred to as um, so in such a distributed Uh, database is is referred to as a, a distributed hash a table. Distributed hash table or dht okay and um, so what we you know what we want to do is basically that we want to randomly scatter the key value pair across all the peers right so what's the you know what's the purpose or the motive is or you know that we want to randomly scatter The record that is what key value um, pairs across across all the peers. Okay, so instead of storing on a single server, since it's a peer-to-peer -peer network, so we want to build it uh, distributed. Uh, distributedly and how that is to scatter randomly uh, the key value pairs across all uh, the peers. And then uh, we can have a list of IP addresses of all the participating peers and have a list, have a list uh, of the IP addresses. of uh, all participating 
uh, years. Okay, but um, but such an approach is uh, you know completely unscalable. Why? Because that each um, you know peer has to maintain a list of the IP addresses of all the participating peers, right? And which is you know uh, not um, you know scalable, right? So we want to make um, um, you know this distributed hash table, or you know we want to uh, make it scalable, such a system scalable, right? So what we can do is uh, we can say okay, fine. There's another way to do it uh, that each um, each identifier is uh, is an integer in the range of so. You know what I can say is that instead of using IP addresses and maintaining all the IP addresses of all the machines or peers, uh, I will use identifier, and each identifier, each identifier, um, is an integer, and it's in the range. Um, it's in the range of zero to two raised to power n minus one. Okay. Um, say for some record n. So rather than storing, you know all the IP addresses of all the participating peers, we will maintain an integer identifier, which is in the range of uh, 0 to 2 raised to power n minus 1 for some, uh, for some fixed, say, n, for some, for some fixed n, to just make it easy for, the, for you to understand, for some fixed n. Okay, and assign each, and now assign each key value pair to the peer whose um, you know identifier is the closest to the key. For example, the closest uh, you know successor of the key. So what I'm saying is, now if I want to sign a record uh, to a peer, so what I'll do, I will assign each. key value pair to the peer or the machine whose uh, who's, um, identifier fire is the closest the key okay so 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 instead of uh, you know storing the IP addresses and all that so we have what we have uh, the identifiers which is in, which are integers then the, the next question is that how we gonna store the the pairs uh, on each identifier of the peer uh, that is being identified with a, the help of an integer value or the identifier so we will assign each key value pair to peer whose identifier is uh, closest to the key. And what is the definition of the closest here? There can be a variety of the definitions of the closest, but here the closest means the successor of the key, right? The next value uh, of the key. But uh, you know, such an approach requires each peer to keep track of all the peers in the uh, distributed hash table, which is the game impractical for a very large scale system with uh, you know millions of peers so this was probably an alternative but again here the problem is that we have to um, you know we have to um, keep each peer the problem with this approach is also that each each peer uh, to record or to keep Record uh, of all uh, all other peers. 
Okay, right. So again, it's not scalable. But by the way, before we move uh, you know, and discuss another alternative and try to conclude the topic, uh, this key value pair, since uh, it has two entries, key and the value. So what we do basically is that uh, we apply a hash function here that converts this key value pair into an integer, right? Value. And that's why we call it what? We call it uh, hash tables, distributed hash tables. So it has, has a, has a one-way function where when we provide this key and value, it gives us an integer value. So, so since we are also representing each node with an identifier, integer identifier, so this record also needs to be uh, represented in terms of an integers, but this record has two tuples, key and value, in order to be represented in the form of an integer. So what we do, we do a hash of, uh, uh, of the pair. We perform a hash function that converts this key value into an integer. Okay, and that's why this name is uh, you know, uh, distributed hash tables. Okay, so the solution to, again, such a problem is circular, uh, circular uh, distributed hash table. So hash is what the integer representation of the pair. Table is containing these, uh, you know, the records and distributed means we have distributed it uh, across the different peers. And now you know, we are trying to evaluate, we're trying to, you know, refine this process from a single machine to, uh, you know, uh, distributed across the different peers and then from uh, identifying these peers from IP addresses to the integer values. And then now we have come to uh, the circular, uh, you know, uh, uh, distributed hash table. And the point here is that each peer has to, instead of each peer, you know, keeping record of all the other peers, each peer will keep record of its predecessor and successor nodes. So peer one will keep record of, say, peer three, and peer three will keep record of peer four and peer one, and peer five will keep record of peer four and peer, say, eight, and peer eight will keep record of peer five and peer 10, and peer 10 will keep record of peer eight and peer 12, and peer 12 will keep record of peer 12 and peer, right? So, so, this is what this is called a circular, uh, you know, um, distributed hash table where each peer keeps track of its immediate successor and immediate predecessor. That is uh, modulo of 2n, right? Modulo. Okay. <laughs> right. And um, what happens in the circular arrangement? For example, if I want to access a key 11 and node is three here, what will happen? Node three will forward it to, is this key 11, uh, uh, you know, uh, where this key 11 record will be stored by the way? The successor of say 10, 11, somewhere, you know, it's on node 11, right? Or, so what will happen here? So node three will forward it to node four, four will forward it to node five, five will forward it to eight, eight will forward it to 10, and then to the respective node having this key, okay? But obviously you can see here, still the number of uh, yes, the, the, the advantage of circular DHT is that instead of having the record of all the peers appear only maintaining the record of its predecessor and successor, but in a worst case scenario, we have to maybe end up having n passes through the peer, through the, the peers here, or through the circular or distributed hash table, okay? Again, it's not efficient. So what to do then? So we'll say, okay, fine. Appear also keeps record of some more peers other than the uh, predecessor and successor. For example, peer three, just for the sake of example, peer three keeps record of peer eight. Peer four keeps record of peer 10. Peer five keeps record of 
peer 12 in addition to its predecessor and successor and peer 8 keeps record of peer 15 right and uh, peer 10 keeps record of 1 peer 12 keeps record of 3 and peer you know 15 keeps record of now this now this network here Now uh, this, you know, this network here is called an overlay network. As not, these links are not physically there. This is overlay network. These are not the actual physical links, right? Connecting these peers together. But uh, we using this overlay network. Now we can reduce the number of passes required to uh, reach uh, a specific peer. For example, now if uh, at node three I want to reach key. 11, so key 11 is clo closest to 8. So instead of forwarding it to load 4, she will forward it to 8. And now 8 will forward it to you know 10 and then uh, the, the, the peer containing the required key. So the next question is, what do you think? How many number of other peers are node uh, or a peer need to keep track of in addition to its uh, you know, predecessor and successive nodes? Well, so there are many different uh, implementations provided by the research community, but they say uh, the running time should not be greater than 